I'm a bad B They stay looking but these brothers can't have me They call me Lonnie Good Good But I'm a bad B Running up the bands broke bitches can't catch me They call me Lonnie Good Good But I'm naughty Big front, big back on the shorty They call me Lonnie Good Good But I'm a bad B Sorry, I think he asked me if I wanted If I would go to Jamaica for him and bring back some yeah. At the time I got the tattoo, he had just cheated on me. So, yeah, literally the day before, like, found out he was cheating, went to get the tattoo, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he came into the country legally. He didn't have any of his papers. He didn't have nothing. He was, he came into the country to stabilize himself here in the UK at the time. So, yeah, he was um, illegal at that point. Cool. Cause you need a new windscreen When I send the whole brick flying in clean I jumped you cheated on me anyway, sick dream I woke up angry and pity, I'm going in deep When you say my name, better hashtag toxic Hold grudges forever, so if you want this Come slide in the baby, be aware I could be a sweet dream or a nightmare This is Sean, she is a beautiful young confident woman who she's just so lovely she's literally an inspiration she's come on here to be like an open book and literally share her story her story is it's just such a relatable story because when us women fall in love we fall in love hard and sean is opening up about how hard she loved a guy and how far this guy could have literally ruined her life but thank God, Sean is a survivor. But it could have gone completely left. And some of the stuff Sean did for this guy, hmm, 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 hmm. I'm sure she regrets it. But I think it's a learning lesson, and I'm so happy she's being transparent and she's holding her head high and saying, "This is what I did for a guy." And guys, if you can do one thing, you're gonna listen and you're gonna learn. Always put yourself first. So yeah, let's all sit back, grab our popcorn, and listen to Sean's story. Period. My name is Sean Gentle and I'm creative and I'm from London. So when I was 16, I got my boyfriend at the time's name tattooed on my right hip. And yeah, his name was spelled a certain way, but I had my own way of spelling it. So I just turned 16, it was carnival and I was with my girls and it was towards the end of the day and this group of guys just appears out of nowhere. One of them was my type, and yeah, we were talking, exchanged numbers. At that time, <laughs> do you know what? My type is somebody who looks like we could be related, so. <laughs> he was street, but not all the way street, which I liked. He had that versatility. It wasn't like completely hood, mm. but it still had that like, edge kind of like you know just that demeanor that kind of you know drew me in I guess and he was funny he was just ticking a few boxes at the time I don't think I had that many boxes to be ticked back then but he definitely stood out from the crowd and my friend who I was with actually knew one of his friends so that's how we kind of started seeing each other because my friend was really into his friend and I was into him and we were just literally from carnival moving forward for the next year like we were together all the time yeah so the beginning was always good vibes like we would always go out we would always be having like parties gatherings he would just take me here there everywhere I just felt like anywhere that he would go I would follow and because I had my close friend at the time who was kind of doing whatever she was doing with his friends it was like our little thing we just would always be doing something go somewhere and it was always great vibes like we never argued it was never anything you know there was no friction it was always just flowing and so in the beginning it was great times like he even met my mom and you know my mom liked him even though she didn't like how old he was because she felt that he was a little bit older than me how old um so he was 21 which in hindsight you know i think he was too old for me personally i just felt like at the time when i was 16 i felt very independent and i knew what i wanted but 
I definitely didn't. <laughs> My name is Jasmine. I'm an artist, an author, a rapper, an entrepreneur, just everything of the above. Miss Jazzy is an amazing, amazing woman. I'm just so proud of her and I'm just so happy that she was a guest on my documentary. Her story will feature straight after Sean's, literally straight after. So I've put two episodes, I mean two stories in one episode. So make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end so you can hear both ladies' stories. They're very, very different, but they both have the same message essentially. So I just think that Miss Jazzy, she's a bad she's amazing she's such a strong woman and since i want you guys to you know get a feel of what type of woman she is i'm going to show you a snippet of her music just so you guys can get a feel of her character come on let's go let's get it he called me philomena bad girl now every man they need her business line only way you can reach her these yahoo boys want to be a party stealer jaw no play me like pele I don't make my own rules straight, Pepe. Baba God be the one I they turn to. All who I my lost soul, I they trust you. Feeling me in a show, killer man, what's next? Entrepreneur, that's what I call a triple threat. No need to fake, no accent, you can birth me. One thing copy me, I for rap queen. Tattoo was, it was kind of towards like six, seven months into the relationship where. I felt like we were still on great terms, like the communication was strong. I would see him consistently as I was doing before, but I felt like I kind of wanted to prove myself to him because I kept saying like, when am I going to meet your family? You know, when am I going to be introduced to your mum? And he would always put that off. And it was strange to me because he was living at his mum's house. So I would go to his house, see his mum, but I have to just like walk past her and be like, Okay, like, you know, it was random. So I felt like, you know, maybe if I do this, maybe if I get his name tattooed on me, he'll realize like, I'm really the one. And you know, I'm really serious about this relationship. And it's something that I just wanted to prove myself to him. So about seven months in, I said, I brought it up and I was like, oh, you know, like, I'd get your name tatted on me and he was just like really like he was just confused like well he acted confused like where's this coming from um and yeah like he didn't say no but he also wasn't like yeah go and get it done um and then one day I guess I just went and got it done and yeah like he was just he didn't really pay that much attention to it he didn't really seem that excited about it but for me it was like an achievement you know I felt like okay I've got his name on me now, you know, he's not going nowhere, I'm not going nowhere, we together forever, all of that fancy fairy tale, you know, vision that I was having. <laughs> it's very interesting that Sean jumps from stage one to stage three, but I feel like she has maybe missed things that she may see as subtle, things she may not see as a big deal, but she's missed certain signs of things that her ex used to do to make her feel insecure. Nobody gets a stage where they need to prove themselves, they need to fix a relationship unless that partner has made them feel like something on their end is wrong. They haven't, you know, shown them that they love them enough. They haven't shown... Sean's partner definitely made her feel like she wasn't doing enough or she was lacking in some area or else she would have not got the tattoo or they would have both got it done so there's no way you get to stage three without going through stage two even if stage two may seem subtle trust me there is no chance you would just jump to stage three like she said she wanted to be introduced to his mother there are things that he did to belittle her things that he did to make her feel insecure so that she felt like she had to do something drastic to prove her love so that he would take her seriously introduce her to the fam or know that she was the one and you know that he would take her seriously and marry her or some or something along them lines but the point is he knew what he was doing manipulative it's never ever unintentional these people play games and they know what they're doing they toxic af and they know exactly what they're doing so i personally think me getting this tattoo for him indicated like okay i've got her like i've got her where i need her and she will do anything for me now because that's when the requests like started to come in and he started to ask me to do you know questionable things that i would never do now because you know i'm a fully grown adult i understand that there's wrong and right and 
a hundred percent I would never be involved in any illegal activity right now so you know he started to ask me questions like oh what about this or what about that like would you do this would you do that and at the time it wasn't like a red flag I was just kind of like of course I'll do this for you like I'll do anything you know I've just gone and got your name tattooed on me like why wouldn't I so that's when things started to in my opinion go like left because it wasn't just him asking me to do things you know I was going out with him making moves like you know doing a lot of things that were putting me in a position that could compromise me going to prison and he was just kind of in my opinion he was using me to get what he needed from a situation because he wasn't risking a lot I was putting myself in risk in harm's way I could have been attacked I could have been like or not we won't say that but I could have been physically assaulted and like in a different kind of a way because I was having to compromise my safety and I was doing it because I felt like okay I'm gonna help him he's gonna get whatever he's gonna get out of this move that we've just made and you know for me I, I personally never got nothing out of it financially there was no money there was nothing it was more I just felt like I was there to support him in what he needed to do and then it happened I think like three times and the third time I literally um, nearly got into an altercation with a man who was part of this scheme. move scheme like scam whatever it was that you know we were doing um, and that really kind of traumatized me because I didn't want to put myself in an environment where I was going to be getting hurt, you know, physically. So when I kind of approached him, like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, you know, this isn't for me. Um, it, it just, it also made me feel degraded. Like I felt like I was degrading myself and like losing my self-worth and respect by doing what it was that he needed me to do just so he could get the bag. And to me, it just felt like, what am I getting out of this? I'm getting abused, like literally. And he is not even there emotionally supporting me when I'm coming to him telling him like, I'm not comfortable with this anymore. Um, so then I felt like once he realized that I wasn't gonna just do anything for him anymore, that's when he started to become a different person. I thought, I just resonate so much with Sean because she was in a relationship where I feel like she um, was, she, she, her partner knew that she loved him so much that he took advantage of that and started to get her to do things that she shouldn't have been doing, things that could have gotten in a lot of trouble, things that were illegal. I feel like I was there, if I never mentioned that, then yes, I got to a point where I wasn't necessarily doing it in the sense where um, me and him were benefiting, but there was times where um, I had to go pick up things for him because he was too busy and um, it's things that I shouldn't have been picking up because if I got caught I would have been in trouble and I feel like you know I, in a sense it just makes you think like if if a human being can put you in a dangerous um, situation when you are a good girl it's just it just shows a lack of love or care because I could have gotten in a lot of trouble and ruined my life even more. They are women who are literally in jail because of a man. So um, I resonate with Sean there and I feel like she's so brave for sharing this and I, I just commend her because I know she's got a good soul she's a good woman and she was just with the wrong man. Hi guys. You know, I just thought, I want to say something very important. Um, one time somebody um, attacked me. Um... Um, and, um, they were saying that I used to do moves with my ex. Me and my ex never used to do moves, bro. I have never a day in my life done fraud, stolen, me, Lani, never in my life. I would never. Um, what I did wasn't necessarily hurting anybody, but it wasn't legal. Um, on two occasions, my person at the time had a performance to go to but he wanted to pick up a bag from somewhere or let's just say a package like that's the easiest way to say it he wanted to pick up a package and he didn't trust any of his boys to go get it so i was the person he trusted the most 
So he asked me to go get it. And I went and get it. And I kept it in my house for like three weeks. Can you effing imagine? I kept it in my house for three weeks. And eventually I said, yo, why is this in my house? Like, if I, if pe- if I get found with this, like, I'm going to do time. Um, So I just told him I was going to throw it away and then he took it away. And the, the, the thing is, I just want to make it very clear, I was not benefiting from any of the stuff I was doing. I was just being very naughty for somebody that didn't love me, okay? And um, same as Sean. Sean doesn't benefit from this she doesn't make a cut nothing you're just doing it as a favor for someone because you love them but no me i have never no i have never don't try it i wasn't doing moves i'm not a bad girl i'm not about it like allow it um i've never done anything to harm anybody i'm not that type of person i thought i was helping my babes but it was wrong i was driving around picking up stuff like i was a bad girl but (laughs) it's a joke to be honest a big joke Personally, I think because when we were doing these illegal activities, it wasn't just me and him, it was me, him and a few other people. Now, there was one particular female who was involved in this situation who, when she found out my age, she, and I heard the conversation, she pulled my boyfriend at the time aside and was like, this girl's too young. You know, first and foremost, we had to be putting ourselves in environments where it was like over 21s and... I was 16 so I think she felt uncomfortable and you know what I respect her because I feel like if I was in her shoes and I saw a young girl being coerced into this scheme that they were doing you know they're fully fledged adults it's fine but a 16 year old I if I was her would have said the same thing like she's too young like you shouldn't be doing this to her um and she kept that narrative she kept telling him and we did this thing like a few times so over the course of us doing what we were doing um I feel like it kind of got started to get to him like okay she's actually quite young because obviously after the third time when I I, like got into a situation with a person and I told him I'm not doing this anymore um after that he did become like distant and his distant was just not really communicating anymore um i hardly saw him anymore and but then prior to that i gave him money and i think that's what it is when when i started to just do certain things like gave him money and obviously did whatever i was doing with him and his friends and then when it got his tattoos so it could be that he was just losing respect it could be yeah it's just like okay because you know when you just like know that you you've kind of you can just use someone and manipulate someone and just like, yeah, like toy with someone, then you do, I guess. You just kind of like, you don't see their self-worth anymore. So maybe that that's what it was. He just didn't see my self-worth. He lost respect. Um, I have no idea. So <laughs> I'm literally just- Yeah, because you didn't ask him. Yeah, so I literally don't know. But maybe that's what it was. He just started to see like, you know what? I can get anything from this girl. But then obviously when I stopped making moves with him, he became distant. When I gave him money, the reason I gave him money was because how much did you give him? Five hundred. But at the like five hundred is five hundred pound. At the time, I was sixteen, working at M and S on a little part time sixteen hour salary, so I was getting like seven hundred pound. Like that was literally my whole, you know, my wage. <laughs> like literally. And the reason I gave it to him is because he was telling me that he owed it to his ex girlfriend, and his ex girlfriend was like harassing him, kept calling him. And one time I was there and she was calling him. So I was like, do you know what? I'll just give you the money because I don't want this girl calling you. Do you know what I mean? So that for me was like, just to get rid of her, like I'll give you the money and you give it back to me. But I didn't see that money back. (laughs) Yeah, so basically um, what had happened was me and him kind of like, were not communicating as much at all. And obviously, for me, I didn't understand what was going on. So I think I just pulled up at his house one time and he was there with a lot of his guys, guys that I know. And I remember going into his room and seeing a condom packet like open, like under his bed. And I was like, what's this? Cause we, at the time, I think I was on contraception. We weren't using protection, well condoms, but um, so yeah like i was like what's this and he reckoned or claimed it was his friend who i know and that friend was doing a thing with my friend was doing something in his room which i knew was a lie i just knew there was no way that he would let his friend just do whatever he wanted to do in his room it just yeah it was a lie 
So I was just like, okay, cool. And the vibe was just off, like, you know, and I think that was the last time I saw him actually. I went to his house. He was just moving different, like everything was just different. But prior to that, sorry, I think he asked me if I wanted, if I would go to Jamaica for him and bring back some <laughs> Yeah, that's when for me, like that was a red flag. Like I was like, oh hell no, 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 no. <laughs> like, you know, I've done a few little things here and there with you doing up Bonnie and Clyde and whatnot. I was gassed, you know, Beyonce and Jay-Z. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but he asked me to go to Jamaica. And then I kind of was like, are you going? And he was like, no, 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 it's gonna be with my boy and you just need to bring back a wrap, like a suitcase, yeah. So I don't, and this is where I, I think he didn't even register the fact that I was 16. When you're under 18, you need a chaperone, like, or your family, you don't, you're not allowed to travel on a plane on your own. So I feel like I had to remind him like, if you well, if you're not coming, then I can't go because I don't know who this person is, and if my parents aren't coming, <laughs> like I can't fly. And I think in that conversation, the realization of like, oh my god, this girl is a little girl, <laughs> like kind of hit him. Um, and he asked me a few times before that, and I was just like, no, like, and I actually, I actually started to think like, would I? Would I go? Like I even asked my mum like oh, would you let me go to Jamaica, like, with some friends? And she was like, are you crazy? Like, you're 16, you're allowed to fly on your own when you're 18. And I was just like, oh, like, I, I was oblivious. I had no idea. Um, and obviously I had to relay that information to him, like, I'm not even allowed to fly on my own without an adult or a chaperone. So he kind of, like, from that conversation, after he asked me twice, the first time he tried to say he was going to go, the second time he said no, but he was like, look, you know, I'll pattern it, my guy is gonna be there, and like, it will be a nice little trip, and I was just like, I couldn't even believe that he was asking me like for a third time, I was just like, nah, like, it's not gonna happen, you know? And once I kind of put my foot down, that's when I realized like, I, I weren't getting my calls answered, like he weren't checking in on me, I don't know where he was, that's when I pulled up at his house, saw the condom under his bed, so he stopped talking to me because, I guess, he never ended it, we never ended it. It just kind of started to fizzle out and because I started to realize that every time I would call him or try to go to his house, he wasn't there. So then I just started to realize like, okay, this is over. Like even though nobody said officially like it's over, I just knew it was. Um, so then instead of like calling him to check up on him or see him, I started calling him and asking him for my money back. So I think there was one day and it was just like a really bad day. Like I was just really down. Like I said before, I had a lot going on sort of just in my life in general. Like I'd been through a lot for 16 years of life. Like I'd been through so much already. So um, I called him and I was just like, you know, it was ringing, it was ringing. And then a girl answered and I was just like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> Bearing in mind, it had been like a week since I'd turned up at his house and saw the condom and na na na, like, and I was just like, mm, you know, I knew something was off, but nothing had been officially said. So I'm like, who's this? And then she's like, it's such and such his girlfriend. And I was just like, oh no, honey, no. <laughs> like, oh my God. And because I'd already been having a bad day, like, that for me was just, I was dumb. And I will never forget because my cousins were at my house for that weekend and they were leaving that day and I was just going crazy. Like as soon as this girl picked up the phone, I was just going mad and I was just calling him. I must have called him a hundred times, calling him back, calling him back. Um, and then I think one day, once he just answered and started screaming, he's like, don't talk to my girl like that. And I'm just like, huh? Like, but I, was I not your girl? Like literally last week? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, he's like, oh, do you? He was just chatting the most. And I think because obviously she was there, he was trying to maybe just act as if, like I don't even know who this girl was, how she came on the scene, when she came on the scene, because for from what I knew, like we were still kind of together. Nobody, he didn't end it and I didn't end it. So I was so confused, but I was just going crazy at this point and my cousins were there, but they had to leave. So they left and I think, 
I just got to a point where I was just like, I can't take this. Like life is just too much. Like I don't deserve this. You know, I'm a good person. What, what's going on? Why does everything need to be going wrong in life? And I just remember going into my mum's cabinet. She had alcohol, like lots of different rum bottles from the Caribbean and finding all these pills in like the little first aid kit that my mum used to have on top of the cupboards and just crushing every single pill. I didn't know what it was. I just thought, I just need to die. Like, I just need to be gone. I don't like this feeling, this feeling of just, you know, like consistently feeling not good enough for people, consistently not feeling, you know, like, I fit in because I was just a very much a out of place kind of a person growing up. I was just always in my own bubble and I always felt like nobody resonated with me in life. So this one guy, like I just felt like he was, you know, my knight in shining armor. And then for him to just do me like this, like I was just like, I can't. And then, yeah, so I just, <clears throat> I think my mum must have called me because obviously when my cousins were leaving, she, my cousin called my mum and said Sean's going crazy, like she's just going mad on the phone to whoever. And my mum was trying to call me like throughout the evening because she was actually staying away that weekend so she wasn't going to be home. And because I'd taken this dose of whatever it was that I'd taken and drank like a whole bottle of alcohol, um, I was just sort of like in and out of the days. And I think my mum calling me, cause she could sense that on the phone that something wasn't right. So she must have called my one of my best friends at the time who lived literally like across the road just asked her to come and check up on me because we used to keep a little key hidden like in the front porch area so she let herself in and i i remember it vividly but it also it's like in flashes because i was kind of like in and out of consciousness um so i remember her coming in the house and everything was just scattered like the drinks the the pills whatever so she freaked out called the ambulance the ambulance came. I just remember being dragged into the ambulance and then waking up at the Royal Free Hospital and just feeling like, what's going on? Like, what's going on? And then from that moment, I had a, to be evaluated by different uh, doctors to assess my well being, my mental health, etc. They had to make me, they had to pump my stomach of whatever pills I'd taken. I had to drink this drink whatever to help calm my stomach because I just kept vomiting as well like um and I just remember one of the doctors sort of like just talking to me and like feeling like do you regret what happened and I was just like I only regret that I'm here that like I'm still alive like I didn't do the job good enough like I you know I didn't kill myself <laughs> so because obviously that answer indicates that I can, I could potentially still you know be at risk of trying to commit suicide or trying to, you know, um, they then was like, okay, we're gonna have to assess you for a little bit longer before we can just release you. Cause you're saying some, you know, uh, things that aren't, you know, sitting well with them, etc., etc. And then anyway, my mum comes in the next day and she was just like, oh, you know, I've been in touch with such and such, the guy I was uh, seeing previously and he wants to come and visit you. <laughs> and I was just like, really? Okay, like, so I'm looking crazy at this present time. Like, I just remember feeling like I was crazy, looking like I was crazy and just wanting to just like vanish because my mum's there, my dad's there, my cousin's there, my aunt's there, like everyone's coming to visit me. I'm just not in the mood. I'm just like, I honestly like just wanted to just evaporate. I didn't want to be there, I couldn't, cope with the feelings that I was feeling and you know the mental turmoil that I was going through everything was just so overwhelming overbearing and it just like literally I felt like I could explode in that moment my mum was like oh he wants to come and visit you and I was just like um okay I didn't say yes I didn't say no so she was like is it okay like and I was just like whatever so he came and I just remember him coming like and kind of like smirking like like maybe it was an uncomfortable like for him like he was just like you know Sean like is this what you're doing <laughs> you know like what are you doing and I was just like what are you like you know what are you doing like why did you have that girl pick up the phone like disrespecting me like that I didn't deserve this 
blah 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 and then all I remember because we were having a like an all right conversation up until he said he turned around and said she's not a bad girl you know she's downstairs she's the one who brought me here that's all I needed to hear I was like she's, she's in this vicinity okay that's it it's game over I need to find this girl and I need to enter because yeah <laughs> so I, I just remember running and obviously you know in hospitals you have like that nightgown thing but you're technically naked because it's just wrapped around you so I'm just literally running, running down the aisle trying to find this person who I don't even know what she looks like, I don't even know who she is. But, and then all I remember is doctors just jumping on me, having to sedate me, having to drag me back to my bed because I'm running down the corridor literally naked, looking for this girl to like do something to her. So yeah, and then that's when they had to section me. They had to read me my rights and said, you're being sectioned under whatever segment, <laughs> you know? Um, and I ended up going into a mental institute for like three weeks, which to be honest was a great experience because it made me like really appreciate life because I was amongst people who had like proper issues, like really going through it. And I was really able to evaluate my life, my situation, appreciate the people that I had around me because my family and friends were constantly visiting me, trying to help me get back to a better place, you know? And at the time I did have a part-time job. I wanted to go back and make money. I wanted to go and work. That's always was on my mind. Like I'm missing out on making money at this point, I'm here. So I would give him 70%, I would say, was, you know, to blame for my mental health kind of like going to the dark place that it went to because, you know, he was a big part of my life at that time, even though I had a lot of stuff going on externally and, you know, I'd been through a lot with people in life. So that also played a part as well, but he definitely was that cherry on the top that just, that's that moment, that final moment for me was just like, it was just too much and I just, I didn't want to be alive anymore and I just felt like anything would be better than having to feel this pain that I was feeling. So in general, when it comes to getting um, a tattoo, unless it's your mum, your sibling, somebody who is your family member, just don't do it because I just feel like you're not gonna be, like that person can forever leave your life but now you've got this tattoo as a symbol of your love or whatever it is, connection to them that you've got. And now you've got to live with that. Even if like, for example, I've had one laser removal session, I'm now gonna tattoo over mine as well. But deep down, I'll always know it's there and it was there. So, you know, if you don't wanna have that life regret, then just don't do it. I am so happy. When I was most shocked when Sean told us the story about, you know, going abroad and the smuggling and I was so disgusted, um, almost emotional because I just kind of thought I can't believe a man wanted to risk your, your life. He just wanted to risk your entire life because he's selfish. It just, it just really disturbed me. Really, it just really disturbed me. I was, I was perplexed, basically. Um, I find it absolutely disgusting and men just need to do better but i'm so proud of sean she's come a long way and she's a beautiful person and she deserves all the love in the world and it's his loss at the end of the day and i just resonate with her because even at the end when she talks about when I, when we when sean talks about being in a place where she almost wants to not even be alive but life doesn't make sense anymore because she's so she's lost it she's made such bad decisions with this person that she doesn't even recognize herself in the mirror she's so severely depressed that she just wants it to all end i really resonated with that i never went to a mental institute but i felt like i was losing my mind at times i did and i felt so lost i felt like there was no hope i felt like my life was ruined i felt like my life was ruined obviously I'm fine now, but at the time I, I felt hopeless. So I totally understand why Sean wanted to wanted her wanted life to be over. You can't. Yeah, so I literally got a matching tattoo with an ex boyfriend of mine from when I was about 18 years old. So the reason that we actually got a tattoo, it was just me being dumb in love, foolish in love. 
literally he wanted us to get the tattoo to prove that he loved me and that um, that's his loyalty like so I followed him to the tattoo shop and got the tattoo because I thought it proved his loyalty as well and that he loved me but I was wrong but yeah <laughs> at the time I got the tattoo he had just cheated on me so yeah literally the day before like found out he was cheating went to get the tattoo and then yeah yeah so he came into the country legally he didn't have any of his papers he didn't have nothing he was he came into the country to stabilize himself here in the uk at the time so yeah he was um, illegal at that point so me and my ex we met when when i was quite young like i've known him from when i was a child for a family friend we used to all like have these gatherings with families and i used to meet him there um he had just come from africa so he was trying to find his foot here, like in England. Um, so I used to meet him at the gatherings. Um, the relationship was, it, I was young, so I can't, I don't know what to term as good, but the relationship was, it was, it went well for a few years, maybe two, two years, but we were young. So that's, it's as good as it could have gotten at that age or at that time. Before the cheating, we had situations of like abuse, didn't really want to go into that but that was part of the reasons but even through that abuse I stayed so you know and then they, then it was a cheat and then it got worse than the abuse and this is how I found out that my ex was cheating or he had a side chick so I was in uni um, studying my law degree so I should have been smart like I should have been but I wasn't so I taken that I, I was actually living with him at this time we had got an apartment together um, he was actually paying the rent, I was paying the bills, but he was doing most of the stuff, so he was quite responsible saying that. So I had gone to uni with the iPad, and I, I can't remember why I took that iPad, but maybe it was just God, but something told me to take that iPad to uni because I never needed it. So I took the iPad to uni, finished my first lecture, um, was on break, and then the next thing you know, I'm scrolling through the iPad, and I just thought, okay, let me go through the messages and um, I don't know why so I think his phone was also connected to the iPad back in the day that's how it was so I was going through and I started seeing messages between his number and another number and in the messages was he was saying stuff like I love you and um, yeah I can, uh, I can only come to the shop for an hour she's here and just I was seeing a lot of stuff like that like um, you know him literally like they were in a full-blown relationship but I was living with him. I, just, I was baffled. Right, so after reading these messages, obviously, I've told my friends, they were my two closest friends in uni, and um, I started calling him, calling him, calling him. He wasn't answering. Then I text him. Um, I've just seen the messages, not, not knowing that he was actually with the girl at the time. So he saw the girl when I went to uni. So I, I was texting him, texting him. When he saw the text about me seeing his messages, he's now called me. And he was like, the first thing he said is, are you coming home? And I was like, what? Like, I'm telling you, I've just seen messages with the girl and stuff. So he was with the girl, basically. So what he didn't want to, me to do was leave uni, come home, find the girl there. So I think at that time, he must have kicked the girl out. Because I was telling him I'm coming home, like I'm leaving my, I left my lectures, didn't finish the day, I made my friends miss their lectures because we all left halfway, we had a few lectures left, in fact we had a full day left. We went to my apartment, obviously he had allowed the girl to go, so we just, we just met him there, fair, fair enough. So he's there explaining, you know, he was good at lying, it's not a big deal, I love her as my friend. He wasn't admitting that he was cheating at this point. And for some reason, my friends were telling me, pack your stuff, let's go. I stayed. Fair. The next thing you know, the girl, this is a few days later, or um, between a month later, the girl messages me. And she says, um, I've got a lot of stuff to tell you about your man. Blah, 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 blah. And I was at work at this time. So I said, okay, no problem, let's meet. She said, yeah, I need to, I need to confront him. Let's see who he chooses. Cool. So I said, okay, let's go to my apartment. I live with him, me and you. So I, I meet up with the girl around my apartment where me and him was living. Pull up to the apartment. He comes back. Didn't know that me and her were going to be at the house. I was just saying, come home. Um, I was just making up some stuff for him to come home. So he's come home now and he's met me and the girl. <laughs> so we both confronted him, but um, she had more 
anger than me and I was the one that was in the relationship with him for like up at that up, sorry up till that point it was four years I'm sure so um she was hitting him <laughs> I was baffled she was hitting him she was beating him saying I thought you've left her I thought you've left I'm just here like can you like you can imagine I'm there <laughs> I'm so confused I thought you've left her like how come you're still with her I saw her I saw her Instagram post I'm like Instagram post this girl follows me on Insta oh my days so now I'm starting to get a bit angry but I'm more calm than the girl that is the side chick so I'm just I'm because I was just baffled at this point um so he started saying to the girl or oh, it's not like that then he's saying to me it's not like that like he couldn't explain himself and then the girl just said okay choose between me and the girl that you've been with for four years up until this point and then he said oh i'm choosing her so he walked her out now so she's still trying to fight him and stuff like that but he's managed to get her out of the house after that situation i know i should have left <laughs> but I didn't. So I was more gassed at the fact that he chose me over this girl and then I stayed. And then, it, you know what, it just got worse. Like, it, I think at that point where she confronted him and he chose me, I should have taken that as my point to leave because for her to be so angry at the fact that he's still with me, then I should have known at that point that he was telling us so many things or so many lies about our situation because you know how can a girl be so angry and she's not been with him for that long so that baffled me anyway so um he chose me in front of her so in my head he's chosen me but after he said that i think a day later he ended up texting her saying nah sorry i didn't mean to choose her it was just long so then he got back with her after like after that situation but in secret but she was willing now to be the side chick, knowing that I'm in the picture, but for them to see each other behind me. Okay, like, so the reason that he was probably able to make both of us stay, obviously he was good in bed, um, he was good with his words, very manipulative, knows how to speak, knows how to make you feel like you're the only one and believe that the other person's out the picture. Because he was making her believe I was gone, making me believe she was gone. So he was able to play the field and he, he was really good with his words and that's one thing that I give him. So good. basically, so me and my friend, uh, my best friend at the time, Ella, we've pulled up at my apartment that I'm staying. Let's not call it a night because it's YouTube. Let's call it, yeah, uh, call it. what can we call it? Um, just say a ting. <laughs> a ting? Yeah. Okay, cool. We call that a ting, but do, do, do a hand movement. Okay, hand movement. cool. Because sometimes YouTube is a bitch. It's really bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So me and Ella have pulled up at the apartment that me and him are staying at. Um, we pulled, actually, let me, let me explain it properly. We pulled up. I think it was early in the day and when we pulled up I saw a bag it wasn't my bag I've looked into the bag now and it's I know it's not my bag so in my head I'm saying to this girl that this must be the girl's bag and at this point on on God on everything that I love this guy had actually convinced me she was gone and when I saw that bag I was in shock like <laughs> I was in shock because I was thinking because this we this is now a new apartment like a year gone by now, how is she, she, there's no way this girl can be in the picture. So in my mind, I was even praying to God, like, let this be somebody else's bag. It cannot be this girl's bag, because, oh my, how is this girl still in the picture? So anyway, we've seen the bag, so I sent him a picture of the bag, and I said, <laughs> I text him saying I'm going to throw the bag out. Little did I know he was with the girl, and for some reason, either he showed her the message of me saying I'm going to throw a bag out, or she saw it. Um, 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 he claims he didn't show her, but how did she see it? unless she's uh, anyway so she saw um the message so me and ella now we've gone out and then we've come back in so when we've come back like an hour later or two hours later we've come back after doing what we needed to do so we've come back in and he's there and she's in the house as well like i, I maybe i came back earlier than he wanted me to so they're both in in our apartment now the apartment that me and him stay in so she's in the kitchen area and we have to walk in through like a corridor to get into the kitchen area so i just noticed that he's holding the door the kitchen door for me to enter into the kitchen so i'm pushing the door now and i'm thinking and i keep pushing the door so ella's banging the door i'm pushing the door like what the hell is going on then i hear i hear a voice and let her open it open the door open i'm thinking oh my days it's the same girl he has brought the same girl back into our new house. Oh my lord, I was, I didn't even know what to think. So she's now been able to, because she was stronger than him, because he was, yeah. 
she's not able to open the door now but he's blocking her so one thing i know she's going mad she was like i'll throw you over this <laughs> i'll throw you over this balcony oh he doesn't love you i've been staying in your house whenever you go to work i'm here i've literally been living here without knowing he pays all the things i know that you don't pay a she was just going and going and going so i'm obviously shouting back now because now i'm pissed normally i'm calm but now i think you've got me to level like what this is a violation now so anyway, she's ranting, ranting, ranting. I'm, I'm shouting back, like just letting her know, listen, you can't keep violating me. Like, I'm like, what are you talking about? You're saying he doesn't love me, but if he loves you, then why am I the one in the house? And why are you the one, why are you a visitor or whatever? That's what I was shouting back at her. So she's now gone to grab the thing, the kitchen thing from the, um, from the kitchen. So all I see is the thing in her hand. And she's coming towards me. Um, she's saying she's gonna end me, she's gonna end me. And then, but he now steps in front of me and kind of in front of her to like block, like she's trying to, he's now trying to stop her from harming me with the knife, oh sorry, with the, with the thing that he has in his hands. So she's injuring him while trying to get to me. So now my friend, that I've, my best friend that I'm, I'm with, she's like, no, nah, this is too much. So she's now closed the door and said, forget this, Jasmine, get your stuff and let's just leave. Cause it's either you're gonna end up dead because of this man and I can't be the person to witness this because what am I gonna say to your mom? So she's, so my friend is now holding the door with force and saying, Jasmine, she's shouting at me now, get your bags, this is, this is ridiculous, get your bags. So I've gone into the room, I'm listening to my friend, I'm packing my bags, I'm packing my bags, packing my bags, but something is telling me not to go. So she's seeing that I'm stalling. Because I was saying to her, how am I going to leave my own place? Like, how is she going to allow me to leave? How is, like, I was just, I was angry. Like, how am I going to leave my place that I live in for this girl? Like, that violation, I was just not allowing it to run. But my friend wasn't having it. So she was able to overpower what I wanted to. Because if it was up to me, I would have stayed. But God only knows where that situation would have ended if I stayed. So I've packed my bags now anyway. Um, he's now trying to, he's managed to calm her down. So he's now trying to come out the kitchen to speak to me. My friend's not allowing it. She's now, I didn't even get to finish packing my stuff. She's taken whatever I've packed and she's, she's left. And she said, let's go. So I followed her now. We've locked the door and we've gone. Um, he didn't even call me back on that day after I left. Yeah, I, I left the house, the house that we were living in and he didn't call me back. Okay, cool. So after that situation, I still went back. Like he was doing a lot to convinced me to come back to him and come back to your, the apartment because I had got the hotel and I would left for a bit. Um, he was showing up on, at my job, he was just doing a lot. So I did go back, but um, um, as I said before, he was, he was quite abusive. So it was like um, what made me realize and what made me leave. It was actually a minor situation compared to all what I've actually been through with him. And that's what shocked me as to why I was like, why did I, why did this make me leave and not the other things that he had done so we literally had an argument he was in the apartment had an argument and the argument led to him throwing a drink on me like was it Fanta or something I was wearing white so that's it you oh my days I was so angry and I was thinking why is it that this got me angry and not everything else this guy has done to me but yeah so he threw the drink over me I got mad and from that day I booked a hotel left and I never went back that's when I left him. He begged, he begged, he begged, never went back and here I am today, you know? So it was, it was like, what he did throwing the drink on me was a small situation compared to what he's done to me previously with the side chick and the abuse and stuff. But that is what opened my eyes. That is what made me want to leave. And I don't know why that is, but it, that, that's literally what it is. Yeah, I think from that, I just felt like, nah, the violation is too much. I let, I let a lot go and I, I lowered my standards a lot to be with him and he knows this. So for me to do that, take all of the rubbish, help him for, help him when he needed it, needed it, helped him with this situation and for him to do me like that, yeah, I, I give him all the blame. Like, I don't, I don't take, no, I would never, I would, and I would never advise anyone to take the blame either. If, if a man can put you in that situation, a man can make you look stupid, a man can cheat on you when, instead of leaving, because he could have just got up and left. I mean, if he had enough, why couldn't he just leave? Like, it's not that hard. I was never going to run him down, you understand? I wasn't going to chase him for leaving me. He could have just left. 
like life is not that deep. He did not have to cheat. He did not have to cheat continuously with the girl either. And he did not have to keep putting me in situations which could have ended my life or put me in situations which could have really harmed me because I'm someone's child. He knows I have a mother, like I'm her only child. So if something bad had happened to me then, it would be my mom crying. So yeah, he takes all the blame to be honest. And yeah, but he got his karma. She ended up doing him dirty, more dirty than he did me. So I guess that's just how God works and it's life, isn't it? And we move. You can't just say that, you have to tell them. You have to <laughs> They're gonna wanna know. So yeah, he got his karma. The girl ended up cheating on him with his very close friend, as I believe. So yeah, so in like in the end, God wrote, like God helped me um, literally, yeah, God helped me get my revenge. I couldn't get my revenge. I'm not like, I couldn't sit, there was nothing I could do to him to be honest, or nothing that I wanted to do to him to say, yeah, I'm going to get you back for everything that you did to me. No, that's just not how I was brought up. But God did it for me, and yeah. Um, Sorry, can you mention that you feel, you said he abused you. Was it mental abuse? No, it was physical. But then why do you not think he, it made, he's the reason you had low, you don't feel like he's the reason you had low self-esteem? No, no, that's not that. He definitely had the reason I had low self-esteem, 100%. Okay, well, no, because you're just saying that he put in that, because you're talking about the cheating a lot, mm -hmm. but I feel like the reason you kept taking him back Mm -hmm. It's because he did things to you that made you not, not, um, you won't, you, you have to understand because you're in, in a horrible situation mm -hmm. and you're in a toxic situation, someone's um, basically abusing you, mm -hmm. like your, your mental health w won't be A1. Yeah. 100%. So you're not going to make decisions like a, a, no, a healthy a person. person. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I just want you to touch on that. You, you don't have to say, mm -hmm. but just touch on the fact that because I was abused, like I genuinely believe my mental, that's why my decision making was very poor. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. So Okay, so like, if I'm gonna be honest, when talking about like the reasons I stayed for that long, because I know people would wonder, people would ask, like, how can you stay with someone for six years and he did everything that he did? Um, if I'm being honest, I would say that you know I wasn't myself. Um, you know, I went through a lot with him. You know, there's some things that I wouldn't really wanna touch on or go into detail but it was it for my age it was bad you understand basically i could have lost my life you understand there's times um the ambulance had to be called there's times that i had to you know go into to uni uh, with a black eye and i wasn't looking well when people noticed but i'm i'm finding excuses there's times i couldn't even see my mom in fact i literally ran for my mom i didn't want to see her because i just didn't look like her daughter and i wasn't acting like her daughter so i do believe that um the reason that I stayed is because of the control that he had over me. He had a lot of control over me because if he didn't have that control, there's no way I would have stayed. And also, I think sometimes it's actually the shame that I felt because I kept thinking if I left at this stage, that like, people would just think like, I didn't really want people to know what I was going through. I was really hiding a lot. Like my friends didn't know I was abused. My parents or my mom didn't know that I was abused. Um, my mom didn't even know anything about the relationship because I was lying to my mom that I wasn't in the relationship. So I was really by myself in that situation and I really believed that he was the only person there for me. Um, besides my friends, I had my friends, don't get me wrong, but I wasn't, I was more stuck to him. And I believed that he was the only person that could give me happiness at the time or the only person that, he, he had control over me basically, a lot of control over me. And he used to control my movements, he used to control who I was speaking to. He used to control where I was going, what I was wearing. <laughs> it was a, there was a lot of control. Like I wasn't myself. It's literally like I was a puppet. Someone was was the master, and that's just how I was going for those years of my life. You understand? So that's probably the reason why I didn't leave do because you, I couldn't. Or I felt like I couldn't. So. Do you feel like? He, do you think? Because a lot of people throw this word around, but do you think he was a narcissist? Yeah, I believe he was a narcissist. I and mean, he he knows how to control, and he knew that I was easily. Um, could easily be manipulated. He knew, like, otherwise, I don't think he would have done it for that long. But yeah, he's definitely a narcissist and definitely knew, he knew my weak points. He knew that he put me in a position where I couldn't see anyone but him. I couldn't even see, like, I used to think that guys wouldn't even, like, like me. Like, <laughs> I never used to see myself as pretty. I just used to see myself as his girlfriend and that was it. And then there's no guy out there that would like me. Like, why would they like me? Like, that's how I used to think. He used to tell me about my hair. He used to tell me that I used to have like, I don't know, he just used to make it look like I wasn't um, as pretty or I wasn't pretty or I couldn't get anyone besides him. And I believed it. I couldn't lie to you, I believed it. And it wasn't that he was 
David Beckham or, or you know, he wasn't, he wasn't that handsome to, to tell you the least, but he made me feel like he was all I could achieve, especially with a man. So I'd go to uni, men would, even men like outside, like boys in my uni, they would try and talk to me and stuff and I'd, I'd literally be like, no, there's no way he's trying to talk to me. Like, I'm not even that, I'm not even pretty. Like, what, like, what is going on? Like, no, 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 no. Like, I was just so in my head because of his control. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah, a lot to do with his control and how he made me feel as a person. And yeah, I would never advise anyone to, to be in that type of situation because it's very, very dangerous and it's very deadly. I advise anyone to get a tattoo with their partner. Like, I just want to advise it. Like, I got a tattoo thinking that it would prove his love and his loyalty. It didn't prove anything. Like, it just got me into a worse situation. Like, I would never advise, don't get a matching tattoo, don't get his name. Even if he says, get a flat, just don't do it because it doesn't prove anything. Most of the times, these guys are making you get the tattoo just to pretend or to 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 make you feel like your love with them is strong it is not trust me they're doing exactly the same thing that they were doing before the tattoo after that after the tattoo but they just want you to have it to make you feel like they're in love with you i just feel it makes yeah just don't don't get the tattoo she seems I I feel like when you look at her, her face value, Miss Jazzy looks like she's confident and like she um, isn't a super vulnerable human being. But that's the thing and that's why I want you to look out for the red flags because you can't always recognise the type of person that's in this situation. Miss Jazzy is brave and she is, she does look like a, you know, a boss bitch and a bad bitch and somebody who can stand up for herself. But the, the truth is she herself, um, you know, puts up with a man's nonsense and abuse for for, for 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 years this man wanted to use her for whatever she she could benefit him for this was not love and i think she's just so commendable because a lot of women will shy away from telling their stories because they want to create a facade they want to create an image and i just commend her for talking out loud and telling her story it's not easy for a woman to come um, come online and with her chat say, I kept taking back a man, I kept taking back a man even when he cheated on me, even when he cheated on me, even when he took the piss and abused me verbally, physically. It's not easy. So I commend Miss Jazzy. She's a strong woman. She's a beautiful soul. She is an angel. I, I personally think she's absolutely wonderful and I commend her. The trauma that stays with you can be so deep that it takes years to get on the other side. I want to say something really quickly before I end this documentary. There's a lot of things that healed me, including my supporters, but loads of little different things healed me from my trauma and my pain. But if we're going to be specific, one time, and I hope the girl's watching this, one time I got a DM from a girl who'd watched a story time of mine. And she said to me, you remind me of my mother. Because my mother is in a lot of pain emotionally. And she's gone through a lot with my dad. They've had, I think she said they've had about five to six kids. Her dad's basically a scumbag and her mom is broken. And she said, no matter what, no matter what happens, no matter how much mom tries to move on, it's been 10 years and counting and my mum is just broken. She's half a shell of herself because of my dad. And you remind me of her and I'm sending you prayers. And I said, 10 years, <laughs> God forbid. And I knew in that moment when that girl said that to me, that she were lying. She was not lying. I could take this a uh, five years, six years, seven years, I could be her in 10 years, still crying over this man that doesn't give a damn about me. He doesn't care whether I'm alive or walking. So I made a conscious effort to say, you know what? You are worth it. You are that bitch, okay? You are beautiful, you are priceless. You're a queen. Your heart is big. You're funny. You're fantastic. And no one's going to tell you otherwise. You better wake the F up. Okay? Your mother. Your mother who you love with all your heart and soul. 
your mother who is a queen, your dad who worked hard for you, your dad who has done like three degrees, came to this country to give you a better life. You think your mum, who thinks you're her little princess, who has paid for your education, who has nurtured and loved you, and your father, who has worked hard for you, has done all of that so that you can be born in this earth and give your happiness and your life to a man? To a bad man? Is that what your parents wanted for you? What your sisters wanted for you? Live the life you deserve. If you can't do it for yourself because you don't love yourself, do it for the people that love you, that know what you deserve. And I made a conscious effort that you're gonna get over this. You're gonna fight until the end. You're gonna, you're gonna bleed. Doesn't matter what you do, because you guys know I got my house, my house smashed. But it could have been worse. It doesn't matter what you go through. It doesn't matter what the consequences are. You're gonna fight. You're gonna fight. And you're gonna get your life back. Every day. Do not get me wrong. People go through breakups. People go through hardships. Cool, they should last a month or a couple of months, two, three, four, five months. It's okay to be sad short term. But going on years, I said, sis, you need to wake the F up. You need to wake the fuck up. Okay, you need to wake the fuck up. Some of the coffee, bro. You are not going to give your life to this man. God forbid. You deserve better. Do it for your fucking mum. And I did. And I did. They call me Lonnie Good, but I'm a bad bee. They stay looking, but these brothers can't have me.